Hello there. Now that we've become acquainted with normal subgroups, we can give this following important definition. So we consider any group that is not the trivial group, meaning that it has at least two elements. Whether it's finite or not doesn't actually matter. We are only going to consider the finite case, but you might as well cancel the word finite here. Such a group is called a simple group if it has only the trivial normal subgroups, meaning this subgroup here that consists only of the identity and the whole group itself are the only normal subgroups of G. That these are normal subgroups is trivial, but you might as well think about it for five to 10 seconds. Anyway, such a group with this property is called a simple group. So a very important class of examples for simple groups are these guys here. Remember, Z sub P is Z modulo P C, which is here this group consisting of P different uh, residue classes, mod P, zero bar, so all the numbers that are equivalent to zero in the sense that the number minus zero is divisible by P. So all the multiples of P, one bar and so on up until P minus one bar. And the residue class P bar for the first time is the same as the residue class of zero bar. This is an example of an abelian group of order P with the natural addition you simply add such residue classes by adding the representatives and then taking the residue class. If you've watched all the videos so far, you should be pretty familiar with that. And now we assume that P is a prime. Then these groups here are always simple. Why is that? First of all, since these groups are abelian, any subgroup would automatically be a normal subgroup. Yeah? And abelian groups um, being normal is um, always fulfilled. So we have to show that there are no non-trivial subgroups at all. But this follows immediately from Lagrange's theorem. Why? Because if I have a subgroup of this group, its order must always divide the order of the group itself, which in this case is a prime number. But there are no non-trivial divisors of a prime. So from this it follows that either the order of H is 1 or it is P. In this case, it is the trivial subgroup. In this case, it is the whole group. This shows that this group has no non-trivial subgroups and hence no non-trivial normal subgroups. So since there are infinitely many different prime numbers, this here, this example contains an infinite list of simple groups. In the next example, we see that this here fails if this is not prime. For example, if I take Z sub 6, this is not a simple group. Why? Because I can write down two non-trivial normal subgroups. One would suffice, but you will shortly see why I write down these two. This here I call N1, which is the cyclic subgroup generated by three bar, which only consists of two element, elements, zero bar and three bar, because three bar plus three bar is six bar, which is the same residue class as zero bar. And so this, of course, is isomorphic to Z sub two, because there's only one group of order two, namely this here up to isomorphism. So we already found one non-trivial subgroup, which is automatically a normal subgroup as explained above because we are in the abelian case. Another one is the cyclic subgroup generated by two bar, which consists of two bar, four bar, six bar, which again is zero bar. So this contains three element, hence is isomorphic to Z3. And now comes a very important observation. This group itself is not simple, but it can be written as the product of simple groups in the following way. 
Oh, this was a long time ago when we talked about direct products of groups. I think this was an example or it was an exercise to check that this is true actually using group tables. So without any theory, in either case, this here is true. This group is isomorphic to this direct product of simple groups because here those are exactly uh, groups from this example because two and three are prime numbers. And even more interestingly, this here is just n1 up to isomorphism. And this here is the quotient of g by n1 because this here is a group of order 3, hence isomorphic to z3, which is isomorphic to n2. So this group can be decomposed in a way into a simple subgroup and the direct product of the quotient of g with this simple group, which again is another simple group. So in this rather vague sense, the simple groups are kind of the building blocks or the atoms out of which other groups consist in the same way that the prime numbers are the atoms or building blocks of the numbers in the sense that every number can be written as a product of primes. But whereas this decomposition is unique up to the order of the, the primes, this here in general is not. So it's not a perfect anal analogy, but I think this helps to understand what is going on here. Okay, this here brings us to a very interesting outlook. In the late 19th century, a German mathematician named Otto Hölder started the following program or said this needs to be done. This is called the Hölder program. Classify all finite simple groups, meaning up to isomorphism as always, how many different finite simple groups are there? And it turned out this was no easy task. It took almost 100 years, actually a bit longer after all the, the gaps in the proofs were filled. And over 100 mathematicians worked on this. There were around 500 papers that were published and all in all around 15,000 pages of proofs of this classification theorem, sometimes called the fundamental theorem of finite group theory or also the enormous theorem for obvious reasons. And all those math mathematicians came to the following conclusion. There is a list of 18 infinite families of simple groups. One we already uh, know. This is the family of these cyclic groups here of prime order, which we just discussed. Another one would be the alternating groups, if you've heard of them. Um, from the uh, subgroups, uh, the normal subgroups of Sn for n greater than or equal to 5. And the other 16, 16 families are groups of the so-called Lie type, which are not um, easy to explain. And there are also 26 simple groups that are not in these uh, families here, called the sporadic groups such that any finite simple group is isomorphic to a group in this list. So this here completely classifies all the finite simple groups, which was the wish of Otto Hölder. This is an interesting fun fact. The largest of these uh, sporadic groups of so these uh, 26 exceptional groups is called the monster group. Uh, sometimes denoted with M, but most often with F1, to honor one of its two architects, uh, Bernd Fischer, a German mathematician who discovered or dis constructed uh, this group here. And the order of this group is about 8 times 10 to the 53. So a 1 with 53 zeros. I wouldn't even know how to pronounce uh, this number. And this is the largest simple group. And this group pops up in very unexpected circumstances, for example, as a symmetry group in string theory. So what the modern theoretical physicists uh, do in order to understand uh, the universe, there this monster group pops up. 
another fun fact about this uh, theorem, Sir Michael Atia, one of the most famous mathematicians of the last century, um, shortly after the, this proof here was announced, said, well, this is a nice intellectual game to play, to try to find these groups, but it is of no real fundamental importance for math. <laughs> and obviously a lot of group theorists strongly disagreed, so he said, well, I sort of had to wear a bulletproof vest after I made this uh, remark. Um, yeah, you can think about that what you want, but I, I think it's a great accomplishment of the human mind to have really found all the simple groups that exist, uh, the simple finite groups that exist up to isomorphism. And obviously it took a lot of brain power to, to arrive there. Actually, the first version here was announced in 1982, I think, but there was a gap in a proof and it took about 20 years till this gap um, could be closed by um, Aschbacher, I think. And the proof of this alone took over 1000 pages. So it's, it's very, very hard mathematics. And in the construction of some of these um, sporadic groups, um, computers are involved. So some mathematicians say this is no complete proof because it involved uh, using computers. Uh, be that as it may, I think most group theorists are convinced that this is true and accept the proof that all the finite simple groups are known today. So I hope you'll keep watching and that you enjoyed that. Please leave a like and subscribe if you want to. I would appreciate that and I hope to see you next week. Bye bye.